Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Do you ever wonder what life would be like if we spent more time focusing on the things that really matter and less time fixating on all of the lesser insignificant things? Imagine if more of us poured our energy into spreading God's love for all in our neighborhood and shining with God's light and life in all of our relationships rather than trying to keep up with the Joneses, complaining about what someone else did or pining for greener grasses. Think of what the world might look like if we spent more time with our spouses and our children, or visiting with our extended family members and friends, rather than busying ourselves with all of those meaningless activities, or taking more time to tend to our personal well-being through exercise, meditation, and prayer, regular checkups, and slowing down to actually enjoy our meals rather than rushing from one thing to the next at the expense of our mental and our physical health. What might the world look like? What might our lives look like if we focused more on the common good and less on our own personal desires? Do you ever wonder? I do. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This year, these words of Ash Wednesday hit especially hard for me. Maybe it's because my dad passed away only three months ago, and I'm still processing this earthly life without him in it. Or maybe it's because for almost two years now, we've been hearing about and seeing the images of the war in Ukraine. And for almost a third of a year now, the war between Jerusalem and Hamas. Or maybe these words are impacting me deeply not this year, not because of something as obvious as those examples, but because of something a little more subtle, like the emotional exhaustion felt as a result of some of the experiences that we experienced here at St. Matthew. Or possibly, it's not for any one of these reasons, but on account of all of them. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Tonight we enter into the season and discipline of Lent, It's a time when we're encouraged to pause and reflect on life and death, on faith and doubt, and on God's sacrificial love found in the person of Jesus. It's a period of time during which we are encouraged to strip away all of the frills and distractions that get in the way and complicate our walk with God. It's a time when we're encouraged to get back to the basics. Lent was, in its earliest form, a short time that was set aside for those who were preparing for baptism at the great overnight Easter vigil, a worship service that lasted from sundown until sunrise and was the primary festival of the early church. These baptismal candidates as a part of their final preparation, would leave behind all of the things of this world that hindered them in their relationship with God and with others. They spent time fasting and praying and serving the poor, things that other Christians performed year-round and not just during Lent. They went through this final instruction of what it meant to be a Christian, preparing them for their new lives that would be lived out in loving service in this world, fasting, prayer, serving others. 
remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. As the years went by, the church began to baptize and confirm people on other days than at the Easter vigil service. It wasn't until the seventh century when the church set aside 40 days prior to Easter, excluding Sundays, as a season, as a season of Lent, and stressed that it was a time for prayer, fasting, and serving others. Surprise, surprise. I'm not certain what happened in that period between the earliest practice of Lent by the early church and the seventh century, when it became a 40-day period. But if I had to make a guess, it's that we, humanity, lost our way and complicated things. We probably got distracted from the things that truly and ultimately matter in this life and how we are to live as disciples of Jesus. We most likely started to overthink things and stress the less important as more important. Because that's what we do. That's, those are our tendencies, right, as mortal beings. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The 40 days of Lent offer us an opportunity during which we might wonder together what life might be like, what it might look like, to work on reorienting our priorities in this life, to remove those things that get in the way of and complicate our walk with God and damage our walk with others. It gives us the freedom to become that person that brings light and life and joy into a room rather than that person that sucks all of that out of it. So repent. Repent and believe in the good news. Turn back. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. God is love. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Amen.